What do we think of the word when we hear the word blue ocean economy? Is it a strategy? Does it add with the other economic uh, strategies that's going on in the world? And what are the implications for Sri Lanka? And what can the private sector do? To discuss this and more, we have with us an eminent personality on this uh, um, front row series episode who has been with the World Bank uh, for more than two decades and is now a consultant. And we're pleasure to have here an expert on this topic of the blue ocean economy, Dr. Indu Hewasan with us. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Um, so in what we'd like to sort of understand, I think, because uh, our viewers may be aware, may not be aware, uh, but this is sort of like a buzzword uh, that we hear, I think, with the budget for 2018 as well, the government presented what we called, or what we came to know as the blue-green budget. Um, what exactly is the blue ocean economy um, in, in very simple terms and what are some of the things that have taken uh, place in some countries uh, to enact this uh, strategy? Okay, it's, uh, yes, you mentioned that it's a buzzword, you could, uh, we could take it from there. Uh, you remember that when uh, uh, the Rio plus 10 and Rio plus 20 and they were talking about environment and development, sustainable development. Now sustainable development also was like a catch-all phrase and it was also like a buzzword, you know, because it was taking care of the environment, conservation, but also development um, of the natural resources, of the environment. So similarly, the blue economy, is, it's just that it's focused on the ocean and the coastal space. And um, it is also using the ocean and coastal resources in a sustainable way that does not uh, degrade and devastate the uh, ocean and coastal space but promotes growth and livelihoods and jobs and uh, income for the coastal people and the fishing people and the people who are in, involved in tourism and also innovation in terms of new areas of business um, that is where the private sector may come in uh, it can be wind energy, it can be, um, let's say, um, aquaculture, uh, it can be uh, uh, farming, fish farming, because the nearshore fisheries is all, almost all depleted in many countries. So uh, there are a lot of areas where the private sector can come in. Um, we can go into that uh, further, but in terms of definition, uh, it's very opaque, you know, the United Nations uh, definition is uh, uh, using the ocean and coastal resources in a sustainable manner to promote growth and livelihoods. That's, that's what it is. And then uh, Gunther Pauli, who is, the, who is the author of this blue economy concept, he talks about the marriage between um, the uh, resource use, innovation, livelihoods, and so on. So, so they're, they're pretty much the same, but uh, it's a little opaque in terms of how do we measure this blue economy, the growth of blue economy, how do we measure? It's not very clear, uh, but people are going ahead with research uh, in order to have a better idea of how to measure and monitor this growth of the blue economy. You've been, I think, involved with uh, some projects uh, in your capacity uh, as well, and Sri Lanka being an island nation as well. What have you seen in other countries which have a similar mm -hmm. uh, profile to Sri Lanka? And are things, or is this strategy being overlooked uh, in Sri Lanka? Or do you see at least optimism that certain things could be looked at and uh, we can integrate some of our ocean strategies to our national economic uh, agenda as well. Well, uh, I wouldn't say it's uh, o overlooked in uh, Sri Lanka because they, they have you have Neela uh, Harita Yugayak. That's I think that's how it is. It's blue green economy as you mentioned. 
So it is, the, it is capturing the blue, that is the oceans, and green, that is the forests and the mangroves and so on. So it is, it is uh, it's there, it is a strategy, but uh, perhaps what is missing is uh, how do we implement uh, this Nila Harita uh, blue-green economy and uh, who could be the partners and how could we monitor, uh, how's, how's it going to uh, create jobs and employment, reduce poverty uh, and uh, move ahead, uh, Sri Lanka can move ahead into the um, upper economy level. So that's perhaps a little bit big and maybe more work has to be done, but I wouldn't say that it's been overlooked. Um, I can talk about other countries uh, that have moved ahead. Some, some are on the very beginning level and others are more advanced. The European Union, for instance, um, has a very comprehensive strategy for the blue economy. And they are even combining the Western Mediterranean, the Eastern Mediterranean, and so on, uh, and how they can join up in terms of the Mediterranean countries um, in order to tap the potential of the oceans in a more sustainable and more uh, effective and efficient way uh, to promote growth and also to create jobs. Um, they talk about uh, certification, they talk about job creation, they talk about sustainable development, they talk about innovation uh, and uh, conservation, uh, all of that, because conservation also re leads to development. As you know about the coral reefs uh, uh, are the source for a lot of tourism because snorkeling, diving and so on, and also the habitat for fisheries. And uh, it is also that means jobs and uh, employment creation. Um, and in a more climate change uh, scenario, it is also the buffer zone that uh, protects our shoreline. Uh, it happened in the tsunami case in Sri Lanka. So. Um, I would say that many people are now more aware of the values and of the potential of these uh, resources, whether it is uh, coral reefs or whether it is uh, mangroves, you know, the, the value is more known, but much needs to be done. Um, so in my final question, I think um, what would be interesting to our audience is how can the private sector also get more involved uh, in this, you mentioned we have this overall vision, but nothing's really being implemented. Mm -hmm. um, what can the private sector do to steer it from some of the examples you've seen uh, globally? Okay, um, it's, a, it's, it's a broad question and a lot to say, but um, uh, the private sector uh, can do it in a, like a two-pronged way, I think. One is there are the traditional blue economy sectors, that's fisheries and tourism. Let's just take those two. And um, those ones we can improve in so many different ways that uh, the spin-off industry, the value addition, you know, the, in the case of fisheries, uh, we export fisheries, but uh, we could add value by um, um, creating much more of an efficient uh, value chain uh, and that is one and then in the tourism case we can also add value by certification like the beaches some of the beaches are um, shall I say less than uh, clean you know a lot of plastic goods and so on um, rubbish you know like so um, if you can have these uh, generate employment uh, with the private private enterprises that own these hotels for instance and communities and the coast conservation department to clean up the beaches and have a certification uh, with international certification with the blue flag or Voyager there are many 
So um, you, can, you can use those to attract bigger and wider um, and maybe more sustainable markets, you know, like, you know, the, the trends can be improved and so on. So, so that's, that's one way. Um, and in the certification, the private sector can also um, engage more in terms of uh, um, manufacture of uh, vessels, say sport fishing vessels, or scuba diving equipment, or surfboards, or snorkeling equipment. And all of them needs to have a safety standard and a certification so that tourists will be safe and they will use them. So like that, those are just a couple of examples, but there are so many that the private sector can engage in and promote this growth and poverty reduction and conservation. I'm sure um, this this discussion needs to go on further in terms of trying to implement some of the things that you mentioned. But thank you so much for joining uh, with us on economy.lk and having this enriching conversation on a very important subject. Um, so to our viewers, stay tuned for similar discussions such as this where we um, bring on experts and discuss some of the key issues that you'd like to know more about.